Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting going to episode 8 of season 2 of the Ancient Madness Prize. It's gotta get started in 3, 2, 1, go. We already know. For me, I would not survive in the woods. I mean, we knew you were close, but damn. The, the fact is that they stayed on that for like a little too long. And they're like, here you go, here's the opening. <laughs> but of course, yes, he's he's always going to be around her 24-7. So it makes you wonder why he's going to be a little closer now. But we'll see. Because you think he, Elias would have been at home, like, chilling to a point where Tisa needed to call him, but because they are like this, he has to be everywhere for her. Because you never know when she's going to get in trouble. Or her. And we don't want that. Going also back to Phil's POV. No. Ah, uh, it's fine. He wants to be around you, Tisa. He just wants to make sure you're okay. Uh, uh, uh. That really just happened, huh? Like, I did not just imagine him doing that. Okay. Aww. <laughs> That's good, right? Fire. Uh -uh. There you go. <laughs> Mm 
Wait, so basically like a siren. Okay, I thought that sounded like something else. I was about to say, y'all heard that? Mm-mm. Right? Something about that ain't right? next to her, please. It's better. It's a girl and her two dogs. <laughs> tells me somebody's gonna get on that. What the fuck? Somebody gonna get on that horse. That you still would have been back home. Wait. I feel like you'll never reach her. Nice job, though. Once again, this is not making me want to go camping. No. No. I will not last. I never will. I never have, and I never will. It just looks cool in anime, but, you know. In real life, fuck new. Not even if he was like, come on, DJ, you can do it. I'm like, no. I'd rather stay at home. If we have an RV, I'm staying in the RV. So that when something happens, I can roll on out. Jesus, Lucy, once again, you are so freaking hard-headed.
seemed like you didn't want to know at the time, so why are you asking now? That's not good, of course. Go find her. Great. What the fuck is that? That's not the horses. What the fuck is it? I stay in your beds. Don't come out. Not good enough. That's not good enough. Go! We need to get to the river! Took a lot out of him. Oh god, it's about to move again!
Yeah, you, you just puppy. You know? The fact that he just summoned him like it was nothing, bruh. You're not going to eat her, right? No! <sighs> oh, that would happen. Mm -mm. Now he comes. Now he comes. What? Oh, no way. I have never been so terrified of a horse all my life. Oh, damn. Oh! Damn it. Ma'am. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, ma'am, you want to explain what that was, boo boo? And I'm guessing it's something that you can only use once for now. Take my hair. Well, at least everything turned out okay, though, but still, you know, what the, that ish that she says, what the fuck was that? And what does that also mean? I mean, that's still, like, you know, Joseph inside of her and everything that he's done, so I, I'm guessing, like, whenever she's truly on the verge of possibly dying, that's when her arm is like, oh, hey, we can do something to save you in a way. Possibly, I don't know. It's just at the same time, she needs to also have conversations with Joseph to get those answers out. Because still, once again, going into the second season of this show, it still feels like we don't really know that much about him. And that's why I still wish, and I think I probably said this on the first season, that we would get like a spinoff or something really kind of about him. And such, because he is an interesting character, and you know, you just want to know what also makes him tick. Why is he the way he was? Because, of course, it's been a hot minute since I've seen season one, so of course, I'm not truly gonna remember everything. But yeah, this episode was nice. The biggest thing I did like <laughs> in the beginning, yes, I, I love once again how Elios is like he wants to be around her and to you know keep her safe and everything. He's like a you know, a nurturing parent or, or, you know, or a nurturing significant other who just always wants to be around their lover and stuff. And it's really sweet, but sometimes you have to be smart and let them go. You can't always protect them all the time. And, and that's truly what it is. But sometimes in those moments, you feel like you need to protect them like almost 24 seven because you don't want anyone or anything to harm them. But I do like the fact is that what Elios did is he had half of himself stay, you know, at the house and everything to go teach his one little class as well, while the other half, doggy version of him, <laughs> stayed with Chise. And so I love the part where she's like, oh my god, like, Elios, what do we do? And, you know, he's like, well, I thought you really didn't want my help. I thought you wanted to be, you know, to find every, to do everything on your own, to be very much independent because she, she's, from season one to season two, she's very much grown into that independent stage where she really doesn't need Elios anymore and that she can thrive on her own without him. But because these two are such a package deal, they still need each other at the end of the day. So I also love the fact that, you know, she turned it around after asking him, you know, I need your help to, okay, no. Give me advice on how to defeat this thing. I think that's a really sweet moment. And then something's also going to tell me that we're going to see that, but in an opposite way where he wants her advice on something. And so she might say the exact same thing and it'll just be like a cute little throwback to this and stuff. But yeah, I mean, honestly, she, she truly has thrived so much. And there's a lot of things that she's done on her own because 
there's going to be a time where, yes, one day she will not have him around her and it's just going to be her. And it's like, oh shit, how the fuck do I get out of this situation? Now, going back to Phil, I was not expecting her to be in this episode because when she... When they ended the scene of her being at home and then instantly were going to this camping trip, she was nowhere to be seen from what I remember. So I'm thinking like, okay, so grandma back at home, you know, doing the issue, abusing the crap out of this girl. And then you see her right here up at the crack, butt crack of dawn about to go help Vanessa and the twins and stuff. But I still wish that Phil would still once again find her voice, even though she has a voice. And stand up to Vanessa. That's the biggest thing. And so I also love the fact that even now, like, Chise is still trying her hardest to become friends with Phil. Even though, like, Lucy is over here like, hey, do not waste your time with this girl. Um, she's not worth it. But, you know, at the end of the day, Chise always sees the good. And everyone, you know, that is like, you know, she ain't a magical girl, but she got, but at times, she gives me the magical girl feels and such, where it's like, yes, I have to be that magical girl and be always kind and always see the good in everyone, even if, you know, they're good, bad, and different, whatever. And, you know, always just at least try to branch out with a hand and befriend them and such. And so that's, at the end of the day, that's what she wants to do. And besides, she's in the ending and they're all friends. So it's just like, when are you going to let this happen, show? We're on episode eight, but we're on episode nine in the next couple of days. So. Just do it. <laughs> Please, thank you. But other than that, guys. That is my reaction for you towards episode 8 of season 2 of The Ancient Magnus Bride. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Macho Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially on Thursday for episode 9. Bye, guys.